on hit Varus in the World Finals this year. He's just spectacular when he gets his hands on the bar. Even in, I think, the quarters it was, when he was able to get that 1v1 against the Ophelios with green-white, and he knew his damage perfectly, and he just walked face first, I'm gonna say into light, and just obliterated him in the 1v1. It was incredibly confidence-inspiring for Gumiushi. He's a guy who's had really, really high highs, but hasn't always been able to transition that into those big series wins until this year, and have to see if he can keep that little performance going up against G2. G2, obviously, know how to leverage the Draven. You highlighted it. It's a comfort pick, it's a signature pick, and for good reason. Guardian proc coming out, though. Hansama getting the worst end of this trade overall. Now Guma starting to free fire. A little bit more damage going down. Carry it ticking away from the oh, Ignite. Oh, look at the fighting. Flash, Ignite, Ghost, Burnt, Cleanse, Ignite from the side of G2. Yike, level two, already looking for a potential dive. Have to be ready to commit to it. They're treating this like a skip, scrim, Daniel Dracos. Like, this is Full level commit. two all in. Move with two Q stacks. Hansama walks forward. Yeah, you can just flash W, instantly carry is now taking out Gumiushi's gonna be in trouble too! Two kills on the bottom side! Traded back for one! G2 come out swinging, all in at level one, and at level two, they make the dive happen. A and I feel like they forgot. I feel like T1 forgot. <laughs> I feel like they had to be reminded why you do not give this man Draven. Look at the flash from Mickey afterwards as well. Just trying to get as much damage as possible, knowing that he was going to sacrifice his life for this play, and it was totally worth it. Look at how much farm ends up getting lost. Mickey, level two, roam. The top side of the Keep it going. jungle is being stolen away. Level two versus level the three, but it's a 2 such a hard 1v1. Instantly the lock of the knockdown. And that's a kill for Yike. And that's the a lead there. in the early game versus T1. Can't get excited though. Daniel Dracos, we've seen T1 earlier today. What are you day. talking about? I am <laughs> amped. Do you hear yeah. Berlin right now? Everybody's amped. G2 playing well. Faker, is he going to go for the dive? Here comes Carrier. Waiting on the E2. Caps waiting on the timer. Well played. Nice yeah, sidestep some back. Strength being shown by Faker. Keep in mind on the bottom side, it looks like Guma might have a freeze on the wave though. So he's going to be picking up a lot of extra gold and experience. Yike. He's a little bit behind in terms of farm, but that doesn't matter when he's got two kills. Broken Blade being bullied a little bit in the 1v1. Jungler is hovering around the top side, so Zeus does have to be cautious of that. Caps. And Yike looking for a play in mid. Waiting. How much time has he got left on the abduct? Not going to find the angle. Knockup is there. Interrupts the shuriken flip, but Yike does not want to overcommit. Doesn't know where owner is. Faker also choosing not to extend that trade. Playing this 1v1 matchup very nicely, though. Has a small CS lead for now. Oh, no, we'll be able to get the box, Scuttle Crab. Let's see if T1 can make a dive of their own. Hansama, very low. Has the flash still. This is big. T1 with a pretty decent XP advantage here, at least for Guma and for Owner. Mickey actually looking for an engage there. Just walking up, knows that he does good damage. Nice. Carry a level 2 bard, very much not threatening without Ignite. Well, now Yike has to escort Hansama through the lane. They need to make sure that this wave gets pushed out. It is a very dangerous position for Hansama to be in. The gate flash over the wall. Instantly, Kuma's now locked up. Yike now stepping forward. The flash out. Into the portal is key. I think Yike anticipating a sidestep there. Nice play from Mickey. Putting that pressure on the level 2 bard. Able to get away to safety, though. But this is what we'd like to see. These two supports recognized across the world. Obviously, Carrier, the reigning world champion, but Mickey internationally always able to make his presence known. And so far in this game, he's doing a fantastic job. Owner, though, back on the map. Hansama, very low HP. Hansama very much in trouble. Ignite already ticking. Portal is there for Owner if he wants to take it. Side Beautiful sidestep. He ran towards him. He put the pressure on Owner. Do what you want. trying to run away. I'm either going to go left or right. What are you going to gamble? Yeah, I feel, like, I, find it. I feel like Owner a little over eager there. Maybe could have taken the portal, got closer, tried to line up the E. But doesn't get the angle. Nice sidestep from BB. It's not going to stop Zeus from just forcing in this wave and backing, Look if he so chooses. CS advantage already, 50 to 29. We talked about how Zeus at the 1v1 has been dominant today, and he's going to continue that. Obviously, this matchup will get a little bit easier for Broken Blade as he gets more items under his belt, and the side lane is going to scale very well. Oh, Mickey in a bit of danger here. Right, trying to hold the wave. All right, he's going to be fine. Draven should be able to catch this as well. Mickey even going to use his uh, support item to secure that one and get a bit of gold. Carry it now. Back out onto the map. Is there an angle to make a play? It doesn't seem like it. Just going to grab chimes in the meantime. Of course, if you missed the bar changes a gajillion patches ago, he's fast forever now. So he is he, the speed. He is the speed. Caps, though, again, taking unfavorable trades against Faker. 
Faker just using that range that Silas kind of has to commit to be able to find any advantage, and Faker kind of playing on the edge, going for the early healing reduction. Yeah. Love Those to see the type it. of trades Caps needs to take, but Faker comes out on top once again. Yeah. So much of Caps' ability to win trades is decided by the healing that comes through on Kingslayer. Yeah, he kind of look for the knockup. Won't nice. quite connect. A little bit awkward there, but Mickey will find the angle. Again, no follow up here, however. Don't want to overcommit. Jack just providing a side. Cut, cover. You see the picture in picture. Broken Wicked, a little bit aggressive. Doesn't quite have enough time on the soul inbound to find the kill or push for anything else. Oh, well, Faker can set up a nice freeze here. There's no need for him to go back. He's just going to clear out that wave. Now G2 move into fog towards the bot side of the map. Broken Blade's found owner. Level six. As long as you stack the Q3 here, you have a pretty easy way out unless Zayas is going to come in more. Broken Blade getting get away to safety. Does, of course, still have the flash. They know where owner is now. Will they look for a Drake? Oh, it looks like they're going to avoid it for the time being. And my question is, can G2 put their foot on the gas? Because they're losing in CS in mid and top in a pretty big way. If you look at the three kill advantage just like that, what have T1 done? They've closed the goal gap. They've done this all day. They're so good at playing around these plates, getting that bit of extra gold. They have a plate in mid. Haven't quite gotten that plate in top yet. On Salva, good damage immediate. Climbs out quick and easy kill pickup. Does not go over to the Draven. A little bit life. rough. They're going to look for the knockup. Yike immediately going to tank. He can try to get the E down and survive. He'll just oh. barely, barely be able to live. Must have been Triumph here. That like. has to have been the Triumph, yeah. The, the small bit of HP that Yike got back, enough to keep him alive. They find more kills on the bot side of the map, and G2 will quickly reclaim the gold lead. Ona, though, not going to waste any time. Going to start off that Herald knowing where Yike is on the map. Let's have a look back at this play. Han Sama sees an opportunity to go for an all-in trade. Knows he has the level advantage. A lot of damage comes down. Cleanse comes out. He isn't quite able to get the kill. That does go over to Mickey. But they know that with the oncoming wave, they can make this play happen. Yike tanking up the tower. Is able to... Oh, really nice finding there from Carrier. You see that extra bit of HP he gained. Thumbs up from Yike. A clean play overall from G2. Yeah, just barely able to get it out. Still would have been positive, of course, if it had been the two for one. But the fact that they managed to get everybody out makes it that much better. Again, 58 to 81, the CS score in the mid lane, very much in favor of Faker. He's Similar story in. on the top side, but Han Sama knows that he has to further extend this advantage. He is the strong point. He is the raid boss, and he makes damn good on that commitment. No hesitation from Han Sama. His Draven is respected around the world, and you're seeing exactly why. Easy pickup onto Guma Yushi. Guma doesn't choose to expend the flash. Six kills now for G2. Faker, though. Just trading aggressively in the mid lane. Again, T1, top and mid, steadily accruing these gold advantages. They just need to stem the bleeding bot lane and they'll be okay. But it's on G2 to try to break this map open. Try to get Draven out of the bot lane, use that advantage elsewhere. I mean, right now for G2, they are kind of bleeding gold in mid and top. As you rightly said, the solo lanes for T1. Knockup is there. Well, hang on. Q1 from the Amubu Faker now going into Caps, but Caps wow. is going to grab that kill. Again, clean performance thus far. On the side of G2, Broken Blade has to be careful. Queuing back through, Fate Seal, not enough. That's a kill already going down, but it's Owner who's been locked at the kickback into the tower. Yike will be okay. Owner in no man's land will just instantly get taken out. A brawl all over the map. Broken Blade gets solo killed by Zayas in the top lane, but Caps, Yike, and Mickey make magic happen in the mid lane. Both Faker and Owner dropping. And some are losing a bit of HP, are losing a lot of HP. But here comes G2. Mickey. On the approach, Carrier has no good angle to throw down the magical journey. Guma now just going to try to go for the 1v1, and he's instantly going to be able to get it. That's one shutdown. But the banquet comes out. Yike going to grab that one. A bit of revenge for Guma Yushi as he's able to punish Han Sama. Left isolated, took far too much poke in the 2 versus 1. He's able to get himself a bit of gold back. Will, of course, cost him his life. Yike needs to be a little bit careful here. Isolated in the dragon bit, but he'll glide on over to safety. Mickey having a huge presence on the map. Roams up towards mid. They get this knockup on the Faker. He tries to use the E to create space. Ends up losing his life. Oh no, Broken Blade. Blade. Can he ult out safety? He just doesn't have the space. This is overheated. He doesn't even need abilities to try to finish the kill here. We're gonna connect on the Harpoon and another kill in favor of Zayas on the top side of the map. Broken Blade, he needs to be playing safer in this matchup. Later on into the game, he can definitely come out on top, but Zayas is just bullying him right now. T1 knowing that G2 needs to reset find a window to secure the first dragon of the game. But even though the kills are 9-4, to four, and the gold is 1.5k in the lead of G2, 
You just know that when it comes to the team fights, T1 are a force to be reckoned with. We saw it in the game versus Heretics. Their Baron was incredible. Yeah. So we'll have to see if Han Sama can actually navigate his way through these fights. Can he avoid a kick from Ona? I mean, incredibly disciplined. And of course, Draven, you get the Blood Rush, you have a little bit of extra mobility, the cleanse as well. But with how strong Zayas is, if he just throws an alt down on top of you with any kind of follow-up from Owner or Faker, hell, even Gumiyushi, it's going to be so difficult to navigate these fights. But the strong points right now really are Han Sama and Yike. Yike here on the top side, looking to use some of his strength to get BB back into this game. Fate Shield goes completely wide. Zayas overheating, though, really has no recourse here yet. Both of them will need to snap back in a moment, and they're able to grab the kill just in time. Yike now on a rampage. So Yike able to relieve some of the pressure in the top lane. Owner going to run into Yike, but Faker on his way as well. Yike able to TP dash out caps. to safety. TP's good. Dash in. One man knock up. Ooh, excellent Q3 through the wall to find two. Caps has to be careful though. He missed on the abduct. Caps now stepping forward. Stolen to call the ultimate. Yike mitigating so much damage immediately. They turn their attention right back to Faker. They're going to grab the kill. Yike unstoppable. Signature picks for G2 paying off. Going golden under the tower. Hansama not going to take the aggro. Now it's going to be Guma in trouble. The Whirling Death, it's coming out. Hansama going to grab another one. Carrier going to be in trouble as well. Mickey can just look for the follow-up. It's going to go a little bit oh, wide. The stun to the wall, Carrier! He's clean with it. Hansama just barely able to get out. How much longer on, on the Cosmic Binding? Carrier desperate to try and get one back. The Q will not connect. Mickey there to body block. Mickey there to tank the tower. The stun comes through. Mickey will give his life, but Hansama finds one. He needs to get the hell out, though. A TP. Now coming in, Faker on the hunt. He's looking to try and execute. Faker on the hunt. As Even if he just gives the kill to Carrier, it'll still be an overall positive. The knockback there, but it's the turret that gets the credit. Clean play from G2 and Hansama. I mean, G2 are very quickly running away with this game. They're mounting the kills, they're mounting the gold, and a lot of it was off the back of Yike, finding great plays across the map. Of course, the 2v2 in the bot lane going heavily in the favor of G2. Zayas going to get some plates back, but this early game is completely dominated by the jungle support of G2. And yeah, we'll take a look back at this play, and you can see the initial <laughs> dive. The initial flash didn't quite go the way Mickey wanted it, but he lands the ult. Yeah. Good ultimate response from Carrier to buy a little bit of time. The damage from Han Sama, though, is just too much. Carrier with a really nice binding here. The second aggro is taken, flashes away, connects Han Sama to the wall, and then he just does what he can to buy time. Fortunately for Carrier, it's not quite enough. Yeah, and really crucial here, Mickey just standing right in front of Bard, so there's no way that that Q can get through. Quick kill on the top side, though. Broke away the weak point of the map, and T1 trying to leverage their strength to continue to put him into the dirt. does so much damage. 6, 0, and 5. He's been involved in 11 of G2's 15 kills. Broken Blade, the sacrifice in top lane. And I mean, you heard it from him. He doesn't have the, the wealth of experience that so many other G2 players have playing against T1. First game showing up in a big way. I mean, yeah, we got to think back to when Yike debuted in the LEC. He was put on all these carries. And uh, you have to imagine that coming into this draft, like we talked about comfort pretty much everywhere for either side. Perhaps maybe Mickey on Amumu. I don't know if he's famous for that, but everything else, things like Silas for Caps, Draven for Han Summit, Yike and his Belveth, something that he is very, very confident on. And he is making magic happen on the Rift right now. G2 going to grab the Herald. Only one Drake taken thus far this game. So overall, a pretty slow game in terms of, in terms of a neutral objective. See what they can get done with this Herald. Yike, of course. It's the true form, the truest true form. So, incredibly obnoxious pressure to be dealt with. Hex flash over the wall from Mickey. We'll just spot Carrier. But instant use of the Herald on the top side. Makes a lot of sense. Getting Broken Blade out of this lane going to do a lot of favors for G2. Baker cross mapping, looking to secure an out of tower of his own. Nice use of the Vard ultimate. Herald, sorry, Equalizer. Rumble ultimate can be used as well. I like it. Still escort this to the tier two, you can see. Caps moving towards the top lane as well. Yeah, the awkward thing is it slows the play, but when the Herald doesn't connect, it also doesn't lose health from the charge. So, a bit awkward, but there's Mickey instantly going for the play. They want to die. They want to try to find the kill. Fate sealed onto two. The follow up is there. Yike able to make it out thus far. Snapback comes in for BB. Han Sama still standing, but he's blinking low. Owner, can he find the kick? Can he find the angle? And he hits the Draven. He finds the angle. Faker has another one with the Shuriken flip. Yike surely has to fall as well. And just like that, 1K into the back pocket of the greatest player of all time. Four members dead, G2, they overstepped their bounds. I saw the rotation coming up from Caps, but the dive was far too overzealous and they get punished for it. The gold continues to ebb and flow, both teams fighting back and forth. But I look at the minimap, what happened to Caps? He was looking to try and join this fight. The dive comes in from Mickey, the ultimate only connects onto Carrier. And while a lot is used onto him, 
HP bars get chipped away. Yike is incredibly low. Han Summer takes one, maybe even two turret shots. And then Zaya sees an opportunity to flash in. Caps finally joins the fight, but it's too little, too late. And here's a big shutdown that goes into the pocket of Faker. Now this Akali is going to be a real threat that G2 are going to have to find an answer for. Yeah, that's terrifying. Again, coming into Worlds, he might not have been concerned that much about Faker, but his performance with the World Championship just got scary and scarier and scarier. And he still retained that form coming into the event today. 2-2, obviously not the most glorious scoreline, has a 20 CS advantage, but that much closer to a second item. Looks like he's going to finish the Morella Nomicon. Could also be a Shadow Flame. We'll see where he wants oh, to take that Hextech that Alternator. But Hansama, placement on that ult, just a little bit awkward. Carry potentially overextending here, but has the rest of the team to cover for him, just to make sure that Hansama cannot freely auto attack. Faker and Caps trading in the bot lane. Perfect execution going to be used there by Caps. Faker just really dominating Caps in this matchup. We'll have control over the bot side of the map. T1 now looking to chip away as Han Summer and Mickey used a lot of summoner spells there. Dragon is still a long way away. So no real objective to fight over right now. G2, I think they should look to slow down the game just a little bit. Get those resets off, spend what gold they have. As T1, are, as you can very easily see, finding opportunities and slowly crawling their way back into the game. Yep. Here's Tron Summon, that single Vamp Scepter, which is the sheer quantity of raw AD that he has, making it easy to stay sustained, even against a bit of poke from the Varus. It is just the on-hit Varus, though, so not quite as lethal. That said, it's going to be a tough game for Ansama. No summoners for the next few minutes. Second carry has ultimate up and available. You know, he will be the priority target. If they can isolate that Draven, it's a pretty easy kill. No real defensive tools outside of the stand aside, and if they're already on top of you because of that Bartle, not a lot of room for response. But yike. It's a big collapse in top lane. TP as well. Two coming in. Caps on the flank. Yeah, continuing to step forward. Has to be careful. Zayas is incredibly strong in the 1v1. Caps now walking in, looking to lock up the rumble. If they can just cut through Zayas, it'll be a good fight overall. They burn him down. He doesn't even get to use the ultimate. And now it's just another name. The zoner has to run for the hills. One more auto. The whirling death catches him on the backside. He flashes right into it. He runs as fast as he can. But the axes from Han Sama will chase him down. Two kills secured for G2. Faker cross-mapping on the bot side of the map. He's too far away to secure this tower, though. G2, I don't think there's really any collapse available to them here. But they will get themselves another objective. Broken Boy can go for the cancel here, but Faker just going to respect it and walk away. Yike now returning. Uh oh Guma. Leaps in, takes the red. Level 10 for Guma. He is dead. Yeah. Yone yes, ultimate, uh, a little unnecessary. He thought he was safe hovering around. Faker, but the collapse came through from G2. Now the TP from Caps was excellent. No vision on the side of T1. Caps completely ignores Carrier, focuses down Zeus, and the damage is, is good. Mickey, meanwhile, over towards Ona, knows that he can throw down the ultimate as we get back to live. Nice side step from Hansama. Not getting connected on by the Cosmic Binding. 19 minutes into this game, 3k advantage for G2. Two Drakes to the side of T1. Faker, two items now. At this stage, see what the setup is going to be around this third Drake. Soul Point pretty crucial. G1 especially too with Faker, who would really hate to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mountain Soul, but G2 incredibly far away from that objective. Broken Boy feeling a lot more comfortable on the side lane, however, once he gets the hole breaker. Might be able to handle the 1v1. Hansama just getting walked down right now, but Mickey is there to body block. That's the binding I was talking about. Faker can just immediately follow up. Hansama has been hit. Faker, does he want to follow up? He's incredibly low. Should be an easy, quick kill pickup for Faker. The cleanse not going to be enough, but maybe I can get the counter punch. They will. Faker dropping down. Broken Blade buying enough space. So far, just going to be the one for one. I'm surprised that Hansama lived as long as he did there. Ends up being Faker for Hansama as an exchange. And both teams will choose to walk away. No real objectives on the map to fight for right now. Of course, the Baron is up, but not something you want to gamble right now. Yep. Definitely not if you're T1. You don't really want to actively force that fight against Han Summer unless you can find a pick onto him. He doesn't have Flash for now, which is a large part of why T1 were able to find that pick on to Han Summer, but that Flash is going to be available soon. So, as you rightly said, Ono just walking towards him, applies the smite, tries to sidestep Faker. Good Bard ultimate here, followed by the Rumble. But T1 a little hesitant to fully commit. Yikes of the damage from him. He, uh, Basically, tries to peel for Han Summer. Sees Faker on the back line and ends up being a one for one. But Faker's only going to get.
better at killing that AD character as the game continues. <laughs> 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 That's what you grasped for? That was your moment? Yeah. yeah. More lethal as the game continues as Yike finds another kill. A little golden freeze frame for that kill. Now able to go over the wall, courtesy of the true form. He is so strong right now. Yeah. We thought this was going to be the Hansama show based on those early bot lane plays, but it really is the Yike show right now. They're pushing in mid. Dragon spawning in 10 seconds. They'll use this priority to control the entire bot side jungle of T1. Deny them all of their vision. T1 posturing on the top side. Looks like it'll just be the recall from Gumiushi. I thought potentially they could try to threaten a Baron, but it would just be too slow at this stage of the game. Yes, it is an on-hit Forest, but with no Ginsu's completed, still a pretty slow take. 2-7 for Guma. I mean, a lot of the goal differences between these two AD carries. Jungle obviously has a pretty big advantage for Yike as well, level 13 to level 12. Stopwatch completed, he's going to steal away more camps. Certainly is the slappiest Stingray. Broken Blade going to get back to base by the whole breaker. Items just coming through. You imagine Bloodthirst is going to be done soon for Han Summer. Yeah, it should be. And then the Baron becomes the next big play for both these teams. Are T1 trying to sneak yep. this? Yep, 100%. Nope. No. That was an interesting 100%. That was a caster curse. <laughs> you did it earlier. You got owner killed. I just stopped the Baron from happening. <laughs> Don't put this on me. <laughs> Alright, T1 just ready. Just reminding G2. T1 is a notorious 20 minute Baron team. <laughs> Did not know. You can see how tense the position is for T1 right now. They recognize the deficit that they're in. They know that if they try and force a fight, that may very well be worse for them. They, they need to try and find what picks they can or yeah. catch G2 off guard. And they may have found one. Kick back onto Han Sama. The Rumble ticking as well. Perfect. Easy kill. Pick up the TP now coming in. It's starting to feel a lot worse. Caps, what's the angle? He's going to steal Faker's ult away and he's going to dash out to safety. Yike, already burning the E, is pretty disastrous. No rumble up, but Mickey has to be careful. Broken Blade off on the flank is immediately going to ult out to safety, but now Carrie is ready to follow up. The stun's going to connect. Guma uncontested. Quick shutdown to Owner and T1 turn their sights to Baron. And just like that, they find two quick picks. Owner with an incredible play onto Han Summer catches him completely off guard. Faker is there to follow up, and G2, there's no real way for them into this Baron pit, and yet, unless Yike can find a steal. Root. Mickey just trying to find an angle into the pit. Yike, no knockup. Can't dash over walls currently with the Q. Now he can. Objective will get taken. G2 now just need to grab as many kills as humanly possible. Dash over the wall will not connect. Yike now going to follow up. Has to be careful though. Caps can't come over the wall quite yet. They're just trying to herd T1. They need to find some kills. They need to limit the impact of this Baron. They'll find at least one, but that's going to be it. Faker and Carry are taken out. But really nice play from T1. T1, they found that pick on the Han Sama. They then punished Broken Blade for his orca positioning. Owner now in a 1v1. Owner knocked up. This is big. They've taken away at least one. Kuma now going to get caught out as well. Caps immediately going to fall off with the stolen bars. Ultimate, he cannot take down Mickey. The burn will just barely connect. Maybe they can get Zayas as well, but Caps needs to get the hell out. Yak immediately going to go in. Going to try to follow up, and he finds the kill. That's the angle. TP now coming in. It is Faker on the way. And just like that, G2 punish T1. They find three kills. Mickey doing a great job finding that engage. Yike just doing more damage than what Ona can do. The late game power of this Velveth running T1 down. He's just got so many stacks. He's so oppressive. He's so powerful. The Red Bull Baron power play amounting to very little. Ona, Ona goes to this fight. And just look at the damage. Slap, slap, slap. It looks good initially for Owner, but Gumiyushi can't really assist. I mean, his damage is still solid. But then a nice binding coming out from Mickey. The damage is there from Caps. Mickey buys a little bit more time. And then look at this flash from Yike. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Flash, knock up. Then with the damage reduction, extremely well played by the mid-jungle from G2. And they nullify the Baron. And Owner, confident to just walk up and start taking that fight, knowing that Guma's behind him, unaware of how many members of G2 were waiting. Cancelled his own Baron-empowered recall. I think he probably could have gotten out, instead opting to start the fight there, thinking that kicking back into Guma was enough. A little bit of a miscalculation. Minute left on the objective, though. There's not a lot for G2 to do here. They can already feel pretty happy that they've essentially entirely mitigated the impact of this Baron outside of the gold. And that's good news, because to be honest, both of these sides are going to struggle to clear Baron empowered minions. Outside of the Rumble, neither one really has long range, reliable wave clear. It's not a lethality bar. There's no Ziggs, there's no Xeris, there's no control mages whatsoever. So leaving a team uncontested with Baron 
could be disastrous for either side. Yeah, I kind of melt through this tower. Faker's forced to back away. He really is the Void Queen right now. That's what I was going to say. You really, this, this is the performance. This is the canonical lore performance yeah. that you're looking for. How she is holding any of those items <laughs> with her weird pointed hands, I have no idea, but it making matter. it work. That she is Broken Blade. Going for a bit of a trade. It's a big shield from the W. Right now, G2 is just putting pressure down onto the mid lane to give them control over T1's bot side to then better set up for the Dragon. Spawning in 15 seconds. So T1's response is to immediately move mid and get control over this wave so that they can access the river through the mid lane. You can see Carrier already chipping away at that wave. And now G2 are forced to respond. So T1 making a smart choice. They can still have access into the river here. Yeah. But it's very dark. Our observers highlighting how little T1 see. They have to slowly walk their way in. Here comes Faker. They just want a 50 50. Broken Blade now able to ult at the safety. One less ult for the fight. That's the objective. Now take it. Faker's going to go in anyway. Finds Broken Blade. Broken Blade taken out of the equation. Mickey trying to lock up Zayas. The ultimate already going down. Yike going golden. Hansama isolated all on his lonesome. The Shuriken Flip will not connect. The ulti from Guma does. Hansama going to be in trouble. Carrier trying to find the angle. Mickey going to instantly find the stun. Oh. Perfect timing. The ult flash. It is immaculate from Mickey X. Yike there to follow up to be dominating. Guma now running. The stun is there. G2 have found the fight and Caps is on the hunt. The AD carry of T1 has nowhere left to go. Godlike for Yike. Four members down. And G2 looking to reclaim some of the hope for Europe. T1 have been undefeated on the day. But G2 are looking to bring the fight to them. 30 kills to 15, 8k the gold lead. They are looking dominant in this match against T1. Credit to T1. They've gone so many rounds today. Maybe they're a little bit worn down, but G2 is not giving them any mercy here. And Look again, Caps isolating owner off on the side, not giving him an angle to find a plan to Han Summer, but this initial fight is not good for G2. Mickey is isolated from the rest of his team. The Belfeth is locked up. The Rumble not getting a huge amount of value, and Han Summer is so afraid of Faker. But then look at this play from Mickey. Keep your eyes on Mickey. He's going to find a flash ultimate onto three. Makes it easy for Hans Sama and Yike to clean up the backside of the fight. Meanwhile, Caps is getting the solo kill onto Ona. And there's nowhere for them to go. Beautifully played fight at the very end for Mickey to help win that fight for G2. Just perfectly timed bandage tops. Anything less, and it's very likely that Bigger could have found the angle into Hans Sama, but makes it work. Outplays in the fight to find the angle. Broken Blade in trouble again. More time to Q3 to get out That's of safety. the Varus ultimate gone, though. Baron in 45 seconds. This is what the fight is over. Oh, man. The, you, this is a little too stressful. I, I, they're going to flip it. They're gonna I flip feel it. it in my heart. It I might mean, not you happen now. Worlds. You remember. I remember <laughs> enough times that T1 have gotten into the pit and stole a Baron. Well, I also sweating. remember the times G2 started the Baron. And we were like, don't start the Baron. Don't, don't start 50, the Baron. 50, don't 50, don't 50. do it. How many games domestically did they lose who's flipping <laughs> Barons? They didn't even have to make it to international. I mean, this is their opportunity. Like they that. can end the year on a high, Dracos. G2 can round things out with a bit of redemption. Yeah. BT1 lose to NRG. Balanced, as all things <laughs> should be. Thanos meme. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. It could all be fine. They just need to win here. That said, T1 incredibly far behind. Despite Still that, Nexus that, falls, I will never exactly, count T1 out. Just by, exactly. <laughs> this is the caliber of team that T1 are, is that G2 have the same kind of leads that T1 has been getting against everyone else all day, and we are scared for G2 <laughs> because T1 are so damn good. Look it's at Ona, constantly looking for an angle. Maybe he can get behind them. Maybe he can find that pick on the Han Summer. Of course, he does have all of his summoner spells up. Four items completed. And Yike, really, like even if you kill Hans, is it enough to get through Yike? GA finished as well mm. for this Belveth. T1 pushed back into their side of the jungle. Mickey on guard duty. The scariest little mummy that there ever was. Banish Toss not going to connect there. Guma just waiting pretty far back. Can just wait to see what G2 want to do. Wait for them to commit to the play before he tries to wander into that jungle. Knows that it could be a death sentence for him. Doesn't have nearly as many defensive tools as the rest of his team. Mickey just continuing to walk up. Carry a fishing for the binding. Will not find it. That's going to be one locked up. Two man ulti. Broken Blade immediately going to follow. They're going to take the jungler out of the occasion. G2 going to keep the fight going. What happened? I don't know what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll keep you up to date as we have more information. That's what we call a cliffhanger. It's like yeah, your favorite is, Netflix show. This is one of the worst moments you want to see a pause in. 
or the best, depending on how much you just like <laughs> anticipation. Oh, the tension is at an all-time high. G2 on the precipice of rounding out there yet with a win against T1. It's a little melodramatic to call it redemption, but it's as a something. European fan, it's, it we'll does kind it. of feel that way. We had a you know bad I mean? year, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget, T1 was the reason we're 1647, okay? That's that's true. You know? Don't put that on G2, but I'm, that's I'm true. I was saying, T1 delivered us a handful, like, a fair share of losses. Best this and year. only best of five performance at an international tournament after MSI this year was BDS beating Golden Guardians. True. We didn't make it to another best of five <laughs> after that. <sighs> we did have MSI, we did have the. the I, yeah, but I said post MSI, yeah, which yeah, was like kind of cherry picky, it's not fair. fair. Like, MSI, MSI was a little bit. Yeah. Had our moments. But the thing is, mm -hmm. look at it like this. If G2 do win this game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Wait, this, they will have won the same number of games against T1 yeah. as the LPL did at Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> True. Back into the and we're back into the game. Oh, God, it's an incredible portal. There's no follow-up. It was sick, but there's, it just doesn't mean anything. Carry is dead. And the G2 are now slaughtering T1. Okay, a bit anticlimactic. Here comes the Varus ultimate from Caps. Caps overextending. Huge damage coming from Zayas, but the follow-up is there from the side of G2 as I catch my bearings here. Baker could be in trouble. Yike gonna follow up. The knockup is there. Yike should just be able to find this kill. He's looking. Stride Breaker doesn't connect. Faker trying to create space. He's fast, though. are just hunting for kills right now. The thing is, you've got to be mindful of the fact that the dragon spawns in a minute's yeah. time. Yeah, Yike legendary. Just a casual solo bolo on the Can go. They do the bar They're pinging it. They think that they have the damage. Broken Blade is TP. 10 seconds. No TP for Zayas. He's also dead for another 20. Ona will be alive, though. True. T1 might have to go, but we got the Void Queen, baby. Yike. Making it work. Stride Breaker movement speed. A little 2% for completed item. Feeling good there as the chase down on Faker. And this is going to be an easy, quick, uncontested Baron pickup by the side of G2. And I feel okay. the tension. It just continues to grow in the audience because I guarantee there are so many people here who feel the same way. All signs point to G2 win. Everything shows that We're they are really, favored. The cast of course is really strong. Well, right I'm now. just saying it like this is just facts. It's true. Well, G2, they're going to be looking for this next dragon. Their third mountain of the game. But it could be T1's third of the game as well. It's T1 that looks to be first to the objective, but Hansel are going to do a bit of a base. So right now, G2's kind of timings are a bit messed up, but T1, they're going to choose to play safe. The level 17 Belveth is not something they want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with right now. Just continuing to scale, too. More and more attack speed uncapped. See what the final item is going to be. I imagine a death stance just to come through here. G2, they're just waiting for Han Sama to get back into the lane. They've created a 1 4. They've abandoned top side. Cap says the TP. Ooh, waves not synced though, so they're going to be a little bit awkward. T1 can respond to each point of pressure Should individually. Be okay. oh, I think that with Caps, yeah, 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 they're pushing that one in. They're going to connect to the two times. All right, they got it. Also, the Void Remora. Remora, yeah. Acting as an extra wave. One knock up there. Mickey immediately gonna find the knock up on a three. Perfect combo. Tempered fate. A little bit too late to temper the fate of T1 or the aggression of G2. Mickey finding another angle. Mikhail's out from Caria is clean though to make sure that his mid laner is safe as Hansama just walks up and tries to two shot the bar. It has to be careful here though. Still double Nexus Towers. But that is a lot of minions. Void Remora or otherwise. G2 going for the throat here. They do not want to mess around. Hansama still standing. Caps off to the side. Isolating Gumiyushi. Gumiyushi taking out Broken Blade. Finding the kill. Baker is not going to be enough to keep this one going. Takes out Broken Blade in the meantime. Owner and Carrier still standing. Trying to burn through Caps. But they just do not have the damage to get it done. He goes golden. And Berlin, you know what time it is. It took all day. It took every single team we had. But G2 are victorious. An incredibly fun match to watch. Huge credit to T1 as well. They've been fighting all day, you know. They've had to bear the brunt of so much pressure. But it was an incredibly fun match to watch. And but G2 showcasing what they're capable of. Yeah. And regardless of the context here, let me just be the first European fan to say, uh, we take those. We take those. We take those. <laughs>
you know, in whatever form, as we are getting ready for the interview on stage. Moments away now.